We have a busy week in front of us this week. We're going to continue on with the pug mug, as I call it, that dog, uh, rotational mold. Last week we made all the parts for it. This week we're going to start making the blanket mold. Uh, that'll be fun. We also, if you'll recall, a couple weeks ago I cast 150 of these boys, uh, but you never saw them painted and finished. You never saw them strong and ready to send to the clients. So we're going to do all that this week. And you get to see that. And the other thing is I've got a little maintenance chore to do. The lid, uh, the top of my vacuum chamber has a gasket on it, and that gasket's just completely worn out. It's old, needs to be replaced. And I'm going to do that as well. And I'm showing you all this stuff because along the way I think there's some pretty interesting rubber and casting and molding issues. Um, some things I've never done before on the channel. Stick around. I hope you find it interesting. I'm ready to put the blanket mold on this piece, but here's the thing. I don't know what it's made of. I don't know if it's resin. I don't know if it's polyester. I don't know. if Maybe it's WEP, which is a water extended polyester. I just don't know. And on top of that, I don't know what it's painted with. So... What do I always say? What do you do if you don't know what you're dealing with? You test, test, test. And so to that end, I put a blob of silicone rubber right here, and I put another blob up here. Let's see if this pulls off. Oh yeah, pulled off perfectly. <laughs> perfectly good, nothing weird going on. Let's see about this one. I have full confidence that if that one pulled off, oh yeah, no worries at all. Step number one for putting this blanket on is going to be just putting a wax seal around the base. Just trying to let the wax just flow down the wax tip pen, the wax pen tip. Not going to do me much good if I miss a spot. It's well worth sealing this seam because we have a lot of seep under and it could potentially even lift the piece off the base, so we don't want that. When the stick, wax stick gets too short, I just weld the stub onto, the, onto a new stick and I'm back in business. That is going nowhere and that's the way we like it. That thing's smoking away. I'm probably gonna die of some kind of carbonaceous fumage. All right, let's get the first shot of rubber. What we're gonna make first is called the print coat. And this is the coat of rubber that's going to catch all of the detail. I'm going to begin by pouring the rubber down into the bottom of the cup in here. Get a nice little bottom fill. And then just kind of move the rubber around so we can make sure we're not going to get any bubbles. Because even this part, we want, a nice, we want to get a nice cast. Okay. So let's pop these little spacers down in there. And they're the things that are going to keep the plug from sinking. And we want to make sure we fill in such a way that we don't catch any air in there anywhere. So I'm going to fill from one spot and let the rubber push out. I'm going to take this plug and put some rubber on it. Get that thing sitting in there. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use this cheap chip brush. It's just brushes toast. This brush is dead meat. It's not going to survive this. It's going to get goobered up, and it will not survive to live another day. So it's going to do this one job, and the reason I'm using a brush is to make sure that I get into the details. I want to push the rubber into the details. So I'm going to try to sort of brush with the texture push the air out. You see how I'm doing that? Brushing that. You can see, if you look carefully, you can see that it's wanting to catch bubbles in each and every one of those little hairs. And this is going to take some time, but we'll get there. We will get there. Just get it wetted out, get the surface fully wetted out, and then we're going to go back over it over and over again, making sure as we see bubbles pop up making sure we press them out. We'll get a good first coat. And I'm pushing the rubber away from the surface so I can evaluate to make sure that I got it. 
So we try our very, very best to get that crucial first coat to be really a good reproduction. Now, especially when we get down into the face, that's where you really want to make sure you have a nice cast. Other parts of the casting are easier to fix, but the crucial you know, faces and high detail areas, the really crucial parts of the skull, is where you want to put most of your energy in making a good cast because that's what everyone's going to look at. I really got to get up way up underneath these, in these surfaces, way down deep in here. All right, so I almost have the face completely coated. A little more on the face. Really got to make sure I'm going to be checking this face over carefully. Boy, and that, the, the part underneath the neck, that is just, just very, very likely to be a spot where we're going to want to catch wicked bubbleage under there. We're going to watch that closely. As it turned out, this plug wanted to wander around quite a bit. <laughs> So I had to get a couple of helping hands here. It's just a piece of wood and a clamp. Here's a little handy tip. I use this drill bit to drill a hole in the plug, and you'll see why later. That, that hole is going to be real important, I think. Anyway, I use the same drill bit to drill into this piece of wood right here, and I don't have a dowel or anything to match, but I have a drill that matches the hole size. So you just use the drill as your uh, tenon to hold everything together. So you use what you got on hand every time. All right, it's the next day, and this thing's all cured up nice. Came out good. Don't see any issues. So we're ready to go on to the next step, which is gonna involve a new material. <laughs> this stuff. This is a hardener for rubber, but it's a different kind of hardener. In fact, I haven't used it. This is the first time I've used it on my channel. Uh, this it makes a brush-on style rubber as opposed to a pouring rubber, which this is. The blue rubber is for pouring. This is for brushing on. Without adding any additional thickeners or any additives beyond this stuff, you'll see this stuff turns into fudge, kind of peanut butter, and it allows me to lay it up and brush it on in thicker layers. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let's mix. So the first thing we want to do is get down deep into the crevices. So I'm going to pile some rubber up and then just push it out in front of me like that, making sure that I don't trap any air. It's all about not trapping air. As you can see, this stuff just lays in place, it does not move, which is what it's for. So let's do the same thing here. I'm going to start in the middle. I can push. I know I can push down into the crevice and then push towards the corners by pushing the material ahead of me. I'm reasonably certain of filling the whole way like that. So I want to go around and do that around the whole piece. Again, kind of starting in the middle of a section like that. So I know that I can push the material and it's pushing air away. It's pushing air out of the way in front of it. Start on one side like this and push the material in front and into the cracks. I get under, up under these ears for sure. Really get in there. The eyes. Be careful to get, really push the material into the details of the face. I hope that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm trying to, like on that channel, I'm trying to push the material ahead of me. So I 
just push out any air that might be down there. I don't want to make a bridge of material on top of a channel and then trap a bubble. Is what I definitely don't want to do. Now that I filled in most of the deep holes, more or less, of course this is going to get a little bit of sag, but not too bad. We go around and start to just generally spackle them up. It's not very much different than frosting a cake, I can tell you. This rubber will give you about an hour of open time, maybe a little more. So you don't have to rush unless it's very hot in your studio and then it might set up a lot quicker. But generally, you should not have to rush too bad to get these coats on. Second coat is on. Everything pretty well buttered up, frosted up. <laughs> and we'll just keep building. This is the process. It's just a layer process. And the thing is, it's about 16 hours between cures. This particular rubber system that I'm using is slower to go, but it does give you more open time to work. While we wait for this to cure, we're going to be doing other things in the shop. And one of the things I thought I would uh, show you, if you'll recall in this video from a couple of weeks ago, I made this mold and we cast up this little guy, 150 of them, except in kind of a seafoam green. Remember all that? Well, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. And um, here they are laid out on the table, ready to paint. I got these kids painted front and back just using good old plain old titanium white acrylic paint. Uh, now I need to wait until it's thoroughly dry because in the very next step <laughs> I'm about to sand most of it off. And the handy dandy flap wheel sander comes back into business. So let's get going on it. As you can see very quickly, it uh, takes the paint right off and uh, the paint that's down in the cracks and the crevices remains behind. I use this tool because this wheel is rougher, it's more aggressive and uh, it, it takes the paint off faster. So it comes out looking pretty cool. This wheel's a lot softer and a lot less aggressive, and it'll do a super good job of cleaning off the details on the front. Surprisingly, this thing abrades off just the right amount. It's just perfect. Works like a champ. The last thing we need to do before we ship these kids to the client is to put on the strings. I've got one left to do, so I'll show you that right now. The point of these knots is to make a necklace that's adjustable in size. Now we have it on this side, we're gonna make the exact same knot on the other side by taking the, the loop and taking the tail, going behind the loop, over both, and pass it through like that. We make the exact same knot on that side. So to see how they're the same? They're beautifully the same knot. Okay, tighten them up. Tight. Tight. And now you have a loop. You can shorten it way up and uh, make a much shorter loop like that. Or you can put the knots closer together and the loop, as you can see, is much longer. We are done with this project, and we're gonna box them up and send them off to the hopefully happy client, and it's on to the next job in the shop. Uh, this is the lid to my tank, my vacuum tank. Uh, as you can see, the gasket is completely blown out. It's just shredded. So I'm gonna tear this old gasket out, and we'll pour up a new one. I got the old gasket taken out of the lid. It's all cleaned up, nice, ready to go. And I'm gonna do something uh, dip a little different again on this channel. This cure agent is for platinum rubber. It's the perfect rubber for this particular application, but 
But one of the things about platinum rubbers that you always have to worry about is they are extremely sensitive to cure inhibition based on whatever material they're cast against. So no way I'm gonna pour this whole gasket out of this incredibly expensive rubber and then not be able to have it cure and then I have a real mess on my hands. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna test it. I'm just gonna pour a little spot of it on here, let it cure, see if it cures. And if it does, I'm golden and I'll pour the gasket once I know it's safe. Beautiful, I mixed up a tiny little batch, 10 gram batch to test of the platinum rubber. Can you see that in there? It's a beautiful green color rubber. And I'm just gonna pour in just a little bit in here. Stuff is goopy. I'm gonna call that plenty for a test. It's such a useful way to check that you're not going to have material compatibility issues, which they're, and they're common in, in working with resins and with rubbers and stuff like that. Always test, always test. Here's our lid test. Came out perfect, <laughs> great, no inhibition. So um, this is good to go. Hard as a rock and tough as nails. Look at this stuff. This is the little bit of leftover that I had in the, uh, in the cup when I, from pouring this test. This stuff is unbelievably tough. It is going to make the best gasket, and it will not die of old age. I'm really excited. I'm really excited that this is going to work. We're going to pour it right now, and away we go. Here's another thing I wanted to show you. With some of the extra resin from this, I wanted to see what would happen if I poured some of the green, see the green platinum rubber right there? I wanted to see what would happen if you poured that against the tin rubber, this rubber. It's hard and it feels good. And you go, yeah, yeah, we won, we won, yeah, okay, cool. Except that when you peel it off, uh, can you see that? Can you see the icky goober nastiness? That is what's known as cure inhibition. Look at that. See how that rubber did not cure? You can, you can see that there's a whole layer of uncured ru rubber. See that? Look at that. That is when I'm yelling about cure inhibition, that's exactly what I'm talking about. There are molecules in this tin-based rubber that this platinum-based rubber doesn't like. And I'm not enough of a chemist to tell you what the problem is, I'm, but, but I am experienced enough to know when this happens to you, you're, there's nothing you can do except know that that might happen and prevent it from happening in the first place. Cure inhibition is a real deal with mold making, something you gotta watch out for, it's something you gotta know about. All right, let's stir. Now you will ask me, are you going to de-air this rubber before you make this gasket? And the answer is, can't. The de-airing lid's laying on the table. The, the uh, surgeon is laying on the operating table. <laughs> so I can't de-air it, but I'll show you why it won't matter. Now I'm trying to get this material down into those little holes, fill those little holes up. So I'm just putting hairs of rubber down there so that the material can run into the holes. Just a little bit, gonna go slow. Gonna take my time. All right, I've gone around and I very carefully have filled up all the holes that I, the little locking holes that I have in the lid. So I've got them all pretty much all filled up. See if I missed any. I don't think I missed too many. Looks like they're all pretty good. Just use this little stick and poke that in there. Got them all filled. Okay, so that's all done, which means now we can go ahead and just pour this out. All right, how are we doing here? I think we're looking pretty good. It's looking pretty full. I want it to be full. One of the things you'll notice is that the bubbles are rising out. They are rising to the top, and that's exactly what we want to see. They'll rise, the bubbles will rise away, and by the time this rubber cures, there will be very few bubbles left in this material. Oh yeah, bubbles are popping out good. Well, this is as far as we got this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video, and I hope you liked it. And if you did, hit that like button, because it really helps me out. We've had a bunch of new subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Welcome, all of you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch my videos and, and to be here and to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And, um, oh, don't forget, I'm always looking for new projects. Um, and more of them have come in, and it's fantastic. So. 
if you have any project that involves mold making, casting, any issue like that, something you don't know how to do, or something you just think would be fun to see on the channel, just hit me up down below in the comments, and we'll take a look at your project, and maybe we'll do it right here on my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.